right? So Chantal asked me about Boolean variables. Now I'm trying out something for the very first time, the one with the WACOM, W-A-C-O-M. So I can, I can write and I can draw and I've been practicing and it seems to be jumping around. Let me do the share again. And I'm going to share my screen. Right, because I want to write for Chantel. I want to try writing with her, right? So the lesson today is Boolean variables. I may just look like a little kid, B-O-L, Boolean, right? Oopsie. A Boolean variable, Chantel, is basically a zero or a one, right? It, it actually comes out in that respect. So whatever the answer is going to be, we can either say it's true or false, or we can say it's um, yes or no, or we can say it's zero or one. All right, so the two Boolean variables that I'm gonna be talking about is zero or one. And I'm gonna try and explain to you, as I would as a teacher, when I was teaching computer studies, I spoke about the light bulbs and the switches in series or the switches in parallel so that you can get an understanding of it, all right? So you can read all these notes. Stop me wherever you want to, Chantel. Mm -hmm. This is your lesson. This is all because of you. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so uh, there's the you would have read up on all of the uh, aspects in le lesson 11, Boolean variables and all that goes with it. So what had happened initially prior to lesson 11, Chantel, is that we simply had a yes or no answer. We did not have anything going as, as far as uh, an interval of numbers. So somebody was either, uh, a light was either off or on, or a switch was on or off, and that's where it ended. We didn't go further than that. But with Boolean variables, Chantal, I'm now yes. able to have an interval of numbers. So that's what you must keep in mind. So when yes. I talk about an interval of numbers, think of the number line, mathematics. This is, uh, let me start mm -hmm. drawing again. Let's see if it will mm -hmm. draw for me. So there's my number line. Mm -hmm. There's zero, whoops. And I and my number line protrudes that way and my line number line protrudes that way. So you must have remember, uh, read somewhere in the notes, Chantel, they had an mm -hmm. interval that said that the number must lie between a certain range. So I'm gonna take this to you in terms of a range. There's, a, there's a, read, 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 you're gonna read all of this. For instance, the number must be greater than 10 and less than 20. So whenever you have something like that, draw a number line, put down, the, put down 10 out there, mm -hmm. and put down 20 out there. Mm -hmm. Now from mathematics, Chantel, it can include 10. If it's including 10, then it's gonna have a circle. If it's including 20, it's going to have a circle. So if mm -hmm. you say, I want all the numbers from, z from 10 to 20 Chantel, then this mm -hmm. is the boundary of numbers that I want. But for us, in terms of computer mm -hmm. programming, we will have a range of numbers where we want this person to continuously enter a number like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And if they do not enter that number Chantel, then we are going to state that they have to re-enter the number. And it's a error message. Does this sound familiar, Chantal? Yes, sir. What does it sound familiar to? Because yeah. it's, it's, it's the same as math. Yes, the same as math and the assignment question. You remember the assignment oh, question yes. the validation? You validate that the person is indeed yes. entering in a number like that. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, the, the person is making an error, Chantel. If he goes and enters in 21, you want mm -hmm. him to re-enter the number. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens out here. I'm just going to jump again. Mm -hmm. And you see where it says, it says on this side, it says, uh, while n is less than or equal to 10, or mm -hmm. n is greater than or equal to 20, I must state that 
the person must re-enter the number, enter it again. And this loop is going to continue mm. and continue and continue. So can you see, again, think of, draw your mm. number line. This is, I want, mm -hmm. I want it from that third point onwards. Mm -hmm. And I want it from that point onwards. So while n is more, is less than equal to 10, uh, what is enter mm -hmm. a number between 10 and 20? Or the number is, sorry, while n is less than equal to 10 or n is greater than equal to 20. Mm -hmm. If n is less than equal to 10, there's the number line. Can you see n is less than 10? That means yes, they yes. went and entered in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Mm. Then I'm going to ask them to re-enter it in. Now, this is a Boolean operation, the OR operation. The other operation that it has is AND. So now what I'm going to mm -hmm. do is I'm going to draw two, I'm going to have two variables, A and I'm going to say B. And these are all the possibilities that A can have. A can be zero and a zero. Mm -hmm. A can be zero and B can be one. one. A can be one. one. B can be uh, zero. Can be both zeros, okay. both ones. Zero. Zero. A can one, be one. one and B can be one. Now these are all the possibilities that two variables will have, right? My writing looks like a little kid. All right, I'm using this uh, a whiteboard. So what I'm gonna draw now, uh, Chantal, from school days, I don't know if you remember, you did physics at school or general yes. science? Physics. Physics. Oh, excellent. What does this remind you of, Shanta? Uh, electricity. Electricity. Good. Now, think of this. These are two switches, Shanta. Mm -hmm. When the two switches are off, they are represented as zeros. Right? These are the mm -hmm. Boolean variables. I told you a Boolean variable can only take on the value of zero. Oh, one. Mm. If A is zero and B is zero, that means both the switches are off. That means the light will stay off. If A is zero and B is one, that means B is on, the light will still be off. So that's what I mean by an output statement over here, right? Mm. Right, so there's it's off, the light is off. And oh, the same thing happens here. The light will only come mm -hmm. on when both are on. on. Right, mm. so that's the, um, and operation. Now it happens somewhere on the top here. This is the or operation. I should have done. I'm doing the and first because uh, there is it here. Look at this way it says if n is greater than 10 mm -hmm. and n is less than 20, C out, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right? So it will only happen when this operation takes place. When both A and B are true or closed. In this instance out here, so, the, so, the, yes, Shanta. So, so what you're saying is that if, let's just say, if it's from 10 to 20, if they're linked, if the whole number is linked, like from 10 to 20, yeah. if it's linked, then it's an end. Then if they are not linked, like maybe from 9 to, to, to less than, than 10, like onwards towards the negatives and higher yes. than 20, then it means that's an or. Yeah, think of it like that, um, right? So let me draw the OR now, right? The OR operation works like this, right? The OR operation works like this. So we have two variables, right? A, and we have B again, both can be zeros. All right, so now I'm going to draw the OR mm -hmm. operation. Let's see if I can draw a nice quick thing. Right, so there's my, uh, you, all did, you did physics at school, so you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Right, oopsie. And there's a light out here, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's my A and B. So you know what you told me now about it being? There's 10 out here. Mm -hmm. There's 20 out there. Mm -hmm. Right, there's my number line. Mm -hmm. So the switch, if you think about the switch, uh, Shanta, if both of them are off, it's going to be zero. 
If one of them is on, can you see the circuit closes? And the light is going to come? So it's going to work. Right. So the same thing happens over here with your number line. For this to be true, a number can be either 22 or it can be 5 and you are true. Mm. Right. Can you see the, the situation, the scenario out here? It can be 100 or it could mm -hmm. be minus 20. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how this works over here. Can you see the output is always 111 for either one of the switches yes. are on. So the same thing happens with this example out here. But because we are talking programming, Chantal, because we are talking programming, right? I'm going to close this paint thingy. I'm, I'm not a good, I'm not very good at drawing. Right. So now I'm going to go to my, my code blocks. Okay. So Chantal, you are going mm -hmm. to see an interval of numbers. Mm -hmm. While the interval is either in between uh, n is less than 10 or n is greater than 20. Remember what I just showed you now? on my uh, yes. paint. There's my paint out here, right? Can you see this thing mm -hmm. here? That, yes, means, that means I must now ask the person to re-enter in a value because I only want the numbers between 10 and 20. So this mm -hmm. is a weird concept for you to grasp because I, because I want the numbers between 10 and 20, mm -hmm. I must actually look for the numbers that are out of 10 and 20 that is less than 10 or greater than 20, so that I will ask them to re-enter the values in. Mm. Do you grasp that concept? Mm, and an integer between 10 and 20. So if they don't, I, I have to give a response for if they don't give the correct number. Correct. So to say. Correct, that's ah. defensive programming, Chantel. You as a programmer ah. must think of the mm -hmm. naughty student that wants to catch you mm -hmm. out or the person that does the wrong thing right uh mm, no i understand you got to give an option earlier mm -hmm. on we the option has to be yes Shanta? it has to be in a way like the opposite the option has to be like the opposite of what i really want from them yeah think of it like that defensively programming okay. right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's one that i gave you two types of boolean variables now right then you get another type of Boolean variable, mm -hmm. Chantal, which is a simple variable, Boolean one. So if there's just something like, uh, let me see if I can start. Okay. Let's call it a variable X. X can either be zero or one. And not X mm -hmm. means whatever X is, it's the opposite of that. Right. One and zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not X means the opposite of what it is. So if, if something is black, the opposite of black is white. Something is on, the opposite of that is not on. And that's where it happens out here. Can you see the alternate solution for the while loop would be not x is greater than 10 and n is less than 20. It's the opposite of that. Ah, the opposite. Oh, I love yeah, that man. words when you said, ah, <laughs> for a teacher, that's the aha experience that they have. <laughs> All right. Mm. Now, now, how do I change the not the the opposite? How do I do the opposites? The, think of it like this, right? The opposite of or is mm -hmm. and. Can you see that? And. Here's yeah. the and. This is the and that and two epsilon, right? The opposite of greater than ten would be less than and equal mm -hmm. to ten. Less than ten. Oops, less ah. than and equal to. Uh, let's just do it again less than and equal to 10 that's the opposite right yes sir. okay where it says a less than 20 the opposite of that would be greater than and equal to greater than or equal to 20. right this is the not operation and that's how that's what happens out here that's what happens out there ah great now i get it now you get it Okay. Yes. So, no, so, I, I, I was never, I was never gonna get this. This. No, this myself. you were gonna get it. You were like, gonna get it. You were gonna get it. If, if you had time, yeah. If you had time, <laughs> you would have. Right. But now we we we, we rush yeah. for time, mm -hmm. and exams is next week, been. Friday. That's what Vincent told me. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So yes, in any while loop, while we here, let's go over some of the 
attributes or the characteristics of a while loop. For me to run this while loop, Vincent, you were still busy on the while loop, I have to have something to compare the numbers with or something to compare to go into the loop. So before I head, I call it a read ahead. Read ahead. So there's C in N. Okay. And here's the condition that I have, Vincent. I got to have a condition. In this case, it's a complicated Boolean condition, which Chantal now understands. It's the interval. It's the A. It's the, it's from 10 to 20. Because I want the numbers between 10 and 20, I must make sure that the person enters that in. If he doesn't enter it in, I want him to go and re-enter it. And that's where the while loop comes in. Now, if you think about it, the person can get it right on the second try or the third try. Or it could take forever to get it. That's what this while loop does. Okay, Vincent? And I'm going to do it in code blocks just now. All right. So let me do it in code blocks. Let's open Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. Still here. Okay, okay, good, good. All right, so let's open up my code blocks. What happened to my cursor? Mm -hmm. Where's my cursor? All right, let's, let's go and minimize that. I don't want that. And watch what a fast typist I am. Let's open up code blocks first. All right, there's my code blocks. Uh, is it sharing my screen? See, I'm so lucky I got another computer available, so I know when I'm not sharing my screen. New share. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Okay, it's going to come up any second now. Let me do a stop share. Yeah. Share screen. Okay. New share. Share. And it'll, it should come up now, right? Right, there we go. Right, so Chantal, I named it in honor of your question. The program is named Chantal. Right, the file is Chantal. So let's go and run this program. So there, look how fast I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put it into code blocks. Right. And aren't I a fast typist, Chantel? Vincent, aren't I fast? Yes, you are, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Very. Right. <laughs> By the way, one of the students asked me a question whether they are going to allow you to use code blocks in the exams. Do you know? I think it's allowed. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. I don't so, think so. No, good block. I think it because even cause cause one five one two it was allowed. You're just not allowed to like go online or just use your books, but using the code block, I think it's allowed. Okay. Is the exam okay. multiple choice or is it written? Okay. In cosp uh, uh one five one two, was it written or multiple choice? It was both. Yes, it was multiple. Both. It was then I suspect this will be both as well. Oh, right? but we don't write physically on a paper and sub scan and submit it. Chantel, what did ha what happened in 1512? Basically, what happened is that they asked for, they gave you a scenario and they asked you to code. Yes. And there's like a block that's there and that's where you input your code. Okay. So I think a similar thing will happen out here. And and how did it go with the new software called Iris? Ish, I'm always struggling yeah. with that. Yeah, the... that thing is it's garbage. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> the, I heard some other comments as well. Yeah, but anyway, just go with the flow right now, OK? All right. OK, so, sir. Right. So, so Chantal, here's the question that we had, right? So the question is, Yes, uh, you sir. asked me about Boolean variables, and I've taken the example from your lesson 11. 
and I'm running mm -hmm. the program. It says enter an integer between 10 and 20. I'm a naughty student. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enter in 15. Uh, no, 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 not 15. Let me go no, and enter. No, no, nine. Nine, right? Nine. Mm -hmm. So when I enter yes. in nine, it's going to say nine is not between 10 and 20. Enter again. Can you see it ran? line number 11 number 12 and it says c in again enter again at line number 12 and this time i'm going to enter in a number 25. Mm -hmm. 25 is not between 10 and 20. can you see this or operation is now taking place uh shanta mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the or yes. operation is looking for any number greater than 20 mm -hmm. any number less than less uh, than 10. 10. right mm -hmm. As soon as I enter in a number within that range, mm -hmm. let's say 12, it's going to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let me go and change this in from the or, I'm going to make it an and. And let me and run this the, program. Is it going to work? Right, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this thing in. It says enter an integer between 10 and 20. So this time I enter in a number like... Uh, Oh, I, for, I forgot one more thing. What did I need to put in? Sorry, sorry. Let me go and change it now. There's the question out here. It is an alternative to this would be. Uh, let me just copy the whole thing, if you don't mind. Why must I rewrite? Control C. Mm -hmm. Why must I retype everything, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So look mm -hmm. at this now, Chantel. Mm -hmm. Not N is greater than 10 and N is mm -hmm. less than 20. So, yeah, there's the not. So I'm thinking of it. Maybe this would be easier for you to grasp the not in terms of the mm -hmm. Boolean variables. So I yes. want a number between there, but if they don't do it, there's the not symbol. Then I want mm -hmm. the program to ask them over and over again, please enter mm -hmm. it in, please enter it in. All right. Mm -hmm. So let me do a compile, uh, Chantel. I'm compiling it. And now I'm running it. So enter a number between 10 and 20. So I'm a naughty student, I put in nine. Nine is not between 10 and 20. Enter the number again. Let's talk of a number 25. 25 is not between mm -hmm. 10 and 20. Enter it again. This time I'm gonna put in 15. I know 15 mm -hmm. is a number between uh, uh, 20 and 25, and it should say thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. And hopefully, uh, Vincent, you also got some. Uh, you were talking about the while loop. Now you can get to grasp with how the while loop works as well. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, I can see there's lots of other participants as well. Look at that. There's uh, Krista Bell. There's Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. There's George. There's iPhone. There's Tabel. Hey, long since I have uh, saw Pabell joining me. Yes, I had electrical problems, but it's all cool now. Oh, good, 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 good. Right. So let's take another. And the uh, progress is good, Sam. Oh, good, good, and and well, I'm glad you're here. Right. So let's go for another one. Let's look at another one where the boolean is here. Let's talk. Let's let me quickly type this in. Let me quickly type this in. There's the program. So when you are studying and if they're allowing you to use code blocks, this is what you should do with your paper, right? Okay, Chantel, mm -hmm. they're allowing code blocks to run. Yes. Yeah. So in the exam, you quickly do this thing. And because you must remember time will be against you. You have about two hours, I think. How's the, how long is the exam? Two hours. Two Chantel? hours. Two hours or three hours? Two hours. Two hours, right? So quickly you copy, Two. paste the code, and you mm -hmm. run this thing, right? Let's let's compile it. There's this modular symbol. Right? There's the modular symbol. Let's compile it. Let's run it. Mm -hmm. It says enter two integers mm -hmm. because I want to find out whether one is a, is a factor of another. Let's put down two and ten. Two is a factor mm -hmm. of 10, yay! Mm -hmm. And you see the Boolean operation that takes place over here. That mm -hmm. means uh, 10 modulus two, is it equal to mm -hmm. zero? zero? Remember I drew this diagram in, uh, in, in 
the, the not. That means it is true. Mm -hmm. And let me let me if I, if I can draw it. Let me draw mm -hmm. again on this. Oh, this is fun. I'm I'm like a little kid drawing here. Huh? Okay. Right. So don't save it. <laughs> so it says x, and it's got y. Whoopsie. So x can either be zero, and y uh, whatever the value is. Right. In my case, x was. Uh, I said x was. Uh, what did I say? X was two, and I said x y was ten. Oh, by the way, there we go. I'm doing a trace table over here, right? And I'm saying y modulus x. Is it equal to zero? Uh, 10 modulus 2, the answer is zero. So the answer is true. Right? Or I could have used the other word, uh, alternative one. So then I determined that 2 is a factor of y. Chantal, you with me? Yes, I'm here, sir. Right. So, so that there's there's this uh, not uh, there's this operation over here. True or false? Yes or no? Zero or one? On or off? You know, I told you about the light bulb. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Um. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you know how to to study this thing, right? Let's let's take another example quickly. Let's see if I can do that quickly for the benefit of Pabello or Cristal okay. that's here. Uh, checks with the number. We did that one there. Mm -hmm. Checks whether it's a factor. Of, there's a modulus Wait, one. Sir? Yes. Yes, Chantel, go ahead. Ask so when we still Oh, is it the next? Is it, is it this one? I think, can we, can we also touch on if statements? All right, there's an if statement here. Is there while and if? Yes, it's a combination. Would you mind? Would you uh, on page 123? Can I take that one, Chantal? Yes, you can use that one. All right, let's copy that. I'll quickly open my code blocks. Right. So if you look at this example, Chantal, there's the Boolean operation. While x is not equal to y, that's what it means over here in line number 10. Not equal to y. Yeah. Yes, sir. I must go inside the loop. And inside the loop, I must now determine if x is a factor of y. That means if I take uh, y and I divide it by x, then the remainder must be equal to 0. Right? That's what happens over here. If it isn't yes, so, if it's not a factor, because by definition, prime numbers have only two factors, which is the number and mm -hmm. one. That's all it has. Right? So let's run the program. Mm -hmm. So let's enter in two integers. I'm going to enter in okay. uh, 13, and I'm going to enter in 1. 13 is not a factor. Okay. Uh, it's, well, it should be the other way around. Let's run it again. Let's run 1 and 13. 1 and 13. Oh boy. Let's run it again. Enter a positive integer. Y. Let's put down 20. 20 is not a prime number. That's, oh no, this isn't wrong. This is wrong. Something is not right here, Chantel. Mm -hmm. And I took this close it and start. Yeah, I'll take it directly from the text. Enter a positive integer. It's 20. This is not true. Okay, uh, let's not take this example. This is giving us some erroneous data. Let's go and run. Let's run another one that has an if statement in it. Mm. Type the following into and compile it and run and check what it the does. The second one had it as well. Uh, can mm -hmm. I go? What what which page was that, Shanta? No, you can you can use this one, so it's fine. Uh, which one is? The one you have just now. This one, the one on the screen. This one here. The fourth one we went to just now. Sir. Uh, the one above the discussion thing. The one above the discussion. You need that one. Uh. 
Do you know the page number? Oh, we, we, I think we already, we, uh, no. Hello? Yes, Shanta? So, can we use the one with the ball something? Can we use the one with the Boolean, Boolean track, the, the one? Oh, oh, can oh, you go is, up a page? Oh, the one with the Boolean, where, where it's a Boolean. There were, there, bool fact equals false. Shanta? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I could do that. I could do that for you. Yes. You just tell me. You're the boss. You ask for this lesson, and we just invite yes, you over here. So let's go and copy that. Okay. Control C. Mm. Copy that. Open up code blocks. Control V. And I, a fast typist, and uh, Control C. Aren't I a fast typist? Right. So let's look at what happens in this case. You know, I told you a Boolean variable. By the way, Boolean variables, uh, if you go and do a Google, it's on George Boole. He's the guy who kind of invented this thing, right? This number system. Or, or, or the way we think about true or false, yes or no. That's where it came from. Right? Let's do a quick, uh, let's do a, what is Boolean variables. Uh, history of boolean all right let's see boolean variables there's it george bull published the mathematical analysis in 1847 ha 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 so can you see where we got the word boolean variable from who's it's named after somebody yes sir ah uh, don't you like that i, I taught you a history of your at, at no extra charge that was a joke <laughs> oh, boy. oh boy, my sense of humor. I know it needs some touching up. Okay, I hear you. All right. So there we go. Can you see factor found equals false? That means mm -hmm. this is a Boolean variable. Factor mm -hmm. found can only take on the value of true or false, false. zero or one. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I enter a positive, there's our positive integer, x is equal to two, while x is not equal to y and not factor found. So factor found is false. That means not false, which is true. I must go inside of this. And remember I said there's the and condition. So both these conditions mm -hmm. must be true for me to go inside the loop. Think of my light switches uh -huh. in series. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if this yes, one sir. runs. Let's see if uh, what, what happens over here. So you can run this program like I, like I did now. When you are studying, you run the program. It says enter in a positive integer. Yes, I'm going to enter in 20. Yes, Chantal. Yes, Chantal. No, so I'm listening. I'm listening, sir. OK, OK. There we go. It says enter a positive integer. 20, 20 is not a prime number. That's true. Yay, I'm happy with that. So let's see what mm -hmm. happens here. I look for 20, x is not equal to y. That means 22 is not equal to 20, that's true. Mm -hmm. And factor found, uh, I'm not in terms of not factor found. Factor found is false, it's not found, right? If y modulus x is equal to zero, Right? Y modulus x is equal to zero. All right, give me a give me a second. Remember, I told you I'll have to just pardon me for a few seconds. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. We are, one, we are okay now. Sorry about that. I told you all in advance that. I guess I have to open the door quickly for my wife to come in, right? So, let's, uh, are you all with me? You're still with me? Chantal? Yes, sir, we're still here. Oh, great, great, great. Right, let's, let's, uh, so, so, where was I? If it's 20, and I got x is equal to 2, while not x and not found, 
that means I didn't find any factors for uh, 20 divided by 2 or whatever, where the remainder is uh, not equal to 0. I run through it, right? If y modulus x, is it equal to 0? Is y modulus x, y was 20, 20 divided by 2, mm -hmm. the remainder is equal to 0. That means I go and change factor found to true. I are still with me? Still with me? Mm -hmm. Right. So, factor found yes, is... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So, factor found is true. And then I go and increment my x by 1. So, where x was 2, is going to go give me 3. It's going to go 3, 4, 5, 6. And once it found another factor besides 1 and the number itself, it's going to say that it's not a prime number. That's what happens out here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the important point in this program is that the Boolean variable factor found was assigned the value okay. false. Right, in mm -hmm. line number seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other point was, you know mm -hmm. what you told me, so, uh, Chantel, where there was a complicated while condition? There's the complicated while condition out here. Sorry, who's there? Who's asking a question? Mm -hmm. Hi, colleagues, struggling. It was me, Sam. Uh, no, you can finish up, but can you? Yes, yes, who's there? Um, I don't know if you can, you finish up, but can you repeat again? Because the fact of found thing is confusing me. I don't get it. Okay. All right. Let's, let's look at this. Can you see in line number seven, uh, Chantel, I'm assigning the Boolean variable factor yes, found sir. to be false. Chantel, line number seven. Yes, sir. As soon as I find a factor that... Yes, sir. Yeah, and do you know how yes. I find a factor? That means when I take the number yes. and I divide it by two mm -hmm. in this case, and then I divide it by three, four, five, six, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and the remainder is zero, mm -hmm. then factor found becomes true. Oh, yes. Yeah. You see, so a Boolean means, variable it, can it, only it, be assigned okay. true or false. I can only or zero or one. Chantel, okay. does it come? Does it make sense? Chantel, um, a bit, sir. A bit. A bit. A bit. Okay, you'll have to go through yeah. this again. Okay. What I would advise you to do, Chantel, is to draw. Sir, can you can you can you perhaps, sir? Yeah. I'm listening, Chantel. Okay. I'm listening. You can no, draw I'm a trace listening. table. You were saying. Yeah, you can draw you a were trace saying table. You have to draw something. A trace okay, table. So. Line. And you have the variables X. And you have the variables Y. And you have the variables factor found. Right. So if you draw a trace table, this will help you to determine the output. Mm -hmm. So in line number seven, factor found is equal to false. Okay. Mm -hmm. In line number nine, let's jump to line number nine. I entered in 20. In line mm -hmm. number 10, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 20, and that's still false. And you go on and on and on and on and on like that. So okay, can you use the program and, and, and give an example of maybe putting a 17? Yes. They, they want an, a 
positive yes. integer, right? Yes, whatever you, put you a 17 ask. instead of a 20. Of course, you're the boss, you're the boss. This is your time now, let's run this. So let's go, yeah. let's put down 17. If I put down 17, and if I divide 17 by mm -hmm. two, it's not going to be equal to zero. It's going to be a remainder of one. So factor found is going to continue yes, to be sir. false. Mm -hmm. And when I run through it, it's going to tell me that the number is a prime number. 17 is a prime number. Like I said, mm. by the way, this tests you on your ability to know your mathematical concepts. And if you told me that you did physics oh. in school, Chantel, okay. that means you wouldn't know mathematics. Yes, sir. And mathematics talks about yes, prime sir. numbers, and prime numbers mm. uh, has only two factors, zero and one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. You're cool with that. Just take this in. I just want to say hello. Yes, I am. I am. I get it. I get it, sir. Right, give me, give me, give me a, give me a, give me a, a, a ten-second uh, break. I'm just gonna say hello, and I'm gonna be back. Here, right. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Consultation, she will direct me again. Okay. Right. Then the bar she can follow me on, on Zoom. Okay, Chantel, are you with me now? Chantel? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Tell next question, mm -hmm. Chantel. What I'd like you all to do is to go through to go through the important points in this lesson, right? Let's talk, Shanta. Yes, sir. Right. C++ provides two Boolean values, namely true and false. They are generally used to determine the value of a condition of an if statement. So you'll read all of this. There's the stock about the relational operators yes. is equal to less than, greater than. There's the and operation. There's mm -hmm. the or operation. There's the not operation. Mm -hmm. The not. Yes, sir. This means that if and and are you, there we go. Read all of this. Right? Yes, sir. And also mm -hmm. do an exercise. Exercise 11.1. Exercise 11.2, 11.3, right? Mm. One of them. Uh, yes, do you yes. have the solutions for this, uh, Shanta? Mm. Do you have the solutions? Uh, I think so. <laughs> okay, but there's there's I'm offering it to you. I again. think you sent you sent us the solution. Yes, I did. Mm. Yes, I did. Right? There's the solutions, yeah. Okay. Right. Chantal, can you see exercise 11.1? Yes, .1? Sir. Right, yes I can see operation. it, sir. There's the AND operation. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. the AND operation again. Child age criteria greater than or equal to 3, less than or equal to 5. Can you see the, uh, what, I, what I call it, the line, the line number? You know, you know the number line, number line and the interval. So it will take... As soon as it is more than that and greater yes, than sir. five, that means yes. the child status is Y at the age of the parent. Let's look at another example. Mm -hmm. While not found a number of tries is less than 10. There's the and operation. Can you see the not, the, uh, mm -hmm. not in front of it? Now, the important thing is that you need to identify mm -hmm. this in the exam if this comes out as a question and work out what the output would be. There's the OR operation over okay, here. Sir. There's the OR operation. Mm -hmm. There's the AND operation. There's the modulus. Mm. Modulus. M modulus. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, any other questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm joking. You can always ask me. 
<laughs> yes, talk to me. Vincent, don't you have a question? Uh, say for now I'm cool, but uh, I was doing pointers and I was struggling. Wait, is, pointers? No, 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 no. no, man, pointers is not in this module. Oh, so it was a, it was for a private thing. I just remembered. That's why I said no, 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 no. no. Okay, 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 okay. Vincent, are you okay, Vincent? Yeah. No, I'm good, sir. Um, I think maybe just one last thing. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, um, I know that um, since we have um, exams coming up, uh, well, our exam on Friday. Yeah. Um, is it possible yes. maybe to meet every day? Yes. At yes. the same time? Yes. It is a topic. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, but listen here. Uh, and then tell me before Malalo and anyone else can put. Yes, sir. Yeah, just say WhatsApp me what you want me to go over because I need to try and figure out a way to teach you something. Like for instance, Chantel sent me a message. She's having problems with Boolean variables. So then I thought about how I taught this at school to my uh, grade 11, uh, 10 pupils. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came up with that light bulb story, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to think yes, like sir. that. So just give me a heads up. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, but, sir. Uh, on Monday, I have a lecture at eight o'clock with my part-timers and on Wednesday, eight o'clock. But we can meet six o'clock or something like that, right? On Monday. Or WhatsApp me if you're having hassle. Okay, or something sir. Like that, right? Okay. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll record this and I'll so, post this to YouTube. Okay. Let, let me stop the recording now.